I'm aggro gamer. I'm, I put the aggro in gamer. Put the gamer in aggro? I don't fucking know. I'm Mr. Hargrave. That's the intro. <laughs> And we're going to be looking at Sherlock Holmes, The Awakened in this video, which is a remake of a 2007 adventure game. What are you guys doing to me? I don't like these games. Look, full disclosure. I don't like King's Quest, text adventures, whatever you want to call them, walking simulators. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of this stuff, but I do like Sherlock Holmes. I watched all of the new, I watched like every Sherlock Holmes thing that comes out. Watched Elementary, the BBC, Sherlock Holmes, the movies with Robert, with Iron Man in them. You know, whatever. Sherlock Holmes, you throw it at me, I'm going to check it out. I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan. And I love Lovecraftian horror. So that seems like a good fit. I was like, yeah, guys, I'll do this. Sure, it'll be a good time. This game's broken into chapters. How long is this thing going to be? I looked it up. It says it's going to be eight chapters long. So look, strap in for a long video here. Hey, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. There's a lot of other stuff on this. What is else is happening on this channel? What is going on here? Baker Street. All right, so normal Sherlock stuff. We're in London, raining all the damn time. Typical setup for a Sherlock Holmes game. You got Sherlock Holmes, you know, being a damn weirdo. You got Dr. Watson being being a Watson. It's early on. As, as far as I understand, this game is set up to be like a, uh, a sequel to like Sherlock Holmes origins. So we're early on in the Sherlock mythos. We're going to find out later that Watson hasn't even uh, hasn't even met Mycroft. Right, so we're very early on in the Sherlock timeline, if you are aware of what the Sherlock Holmes timeline is. We're early on in that. And we're gonna be quickly introduced to the Sherlock gameplay. What we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be staring at a lot of tables and zooming in on a lot of documents. So am I gonna be staring at tables like this whole damn game? Is this what this game is? Is it table staring simulator? How much table staring am I possibly going to do? You're going to stare at tables. You're going to look for evidence and you're going to have some cutscenes. I mean, this is kind of what I expected for your average, you know, text adventure kind of visual novel style. But hey, at least one thing I can say about this right off the top, you're going to notice you got good writing here. There's good dialogue. There's great voice acting. I got to give it to them. Um, you know, they're pulling this stuff right out of Sherlock Holmes playbook. It all sounds great. It all feels very Sherlock Holmes. It's uh, it's firing on all cylinders on that note. So if I got to play something like this, at least I'm playing something that is well written and well delivered. Unlike my own dialogue. The fuck Mr. Hargrave. Graphic presentation is fine. You know, you can see what it is. It's okay. Oh good, I get to play dress ups with Sherlock Holmes. This is gonna be fun. So as a man that likes to dress well myself, I can appreciate the fact that in this game, you get to dress up Sherlock Holmes and Watson. You're gonna unlock more costumes as you go through the game. The better detective work you do, you'll get more costumes, which I suppose is a reason to try to not suck at this. Okay, I can get with it, you know. Play this game, try to do well, get a new hat. I'm motivated. I'm down. Dude, I wish I had like a sidekick for this. It gets so lonely doing these things. I'm just talking to a kid. I guess I'm talking to you. Who are you? What are you doing watching this? But I wish there was someone like, you know, here with me. I wish I had like a sidekick. That is not what I had in mind at all. What is the budget on this show? What do we, and I said a Watson, I said I wanted a Watson, I was going to be Sherlock, you're not Sherlock Holmes, I know Sherlock Holmes, sir, and you are no Sherlock Holmes, okay, fine, I'm just going to carry on with the video, I'm going to do the review, this is, this is destroying my dignity. 
All right, so very early on, we're gonna introduce to a lot of different concepts here. We got this mind palace that we're gonna be entering as Sherlock Holmes to solve various puzzles. We're going to have to go into Sherlock Holmes' mind and make connections. Basically like, I don't know, you go play like a little weird game of Simon where you connect uh, synapses and, and come up with answers to questions. I don't know. It made more sense to me the more I did it here. You know, the more I mess around with it, the more sense it kind of made. If I'm reading, if I'm paying attention to the story, it's a little bit easier, but who can pay attention to this stuff? I can't pay attention to anything anymore. Video games and movies have destroyed my brain. All right, so we're walking around London. It's rainy. We're going to Barnes Bookshop. We're on our first case. It's chapter one, and I feel like this is like the tutorial. We're learning all the mechanics that we're going to use in the game, so I'm trying not to judge it too harshly. Sherlock Holmes is able to observe people. This is, this is hilarious. So Sherlock Holmes, what the hell am I doing? What the hell is going on here? I'm staring at this guy while he's reading a book for an uncomfortably long time and scrutinizing all the details on his body. I'm looking at his head and his nose and his hands. And what is guy, what's this guy got to be thinking about Sherlock Holmes just like hawking him down and like looking him all over? He's, I mean, I assume that this is supposed to be happening within like seconds as Sherlock Holmes looks at him because Sherlock Holmes is so hyper brilliant that he's able to deduce all these things just from staring at this guy for a few seconds. However, what's really happening is I'm looking at this man for an uncomfortable amount of time. How odd is that? I mean, I couldn't imagine how weird it would be to have someone staring at me while I try to do something and making all sorts of assumptions about my life just from my appearance. You're not doing that, are you? You're not doing that Sherlock thing to me right now. Look, when I said you could come over here and sit next to me and do this review, you were supposed to remain it. You number one, you were supposed to be Watson. You were supposed to be a Watson, and you came over here with the Sherlock Holmes hat on, and that made me uncomfortable. And now you're making me more uncomfortable by staring at me for this. Just keep staring at me and you don't say anything. I know you're making your mind up about me. I know it's not nice things. You're rude, aren't you? You're a rude skeleton. So after staring at Mr. Barnes for like an uncomfortably long time, he locks himself in his office. And then I got to figure out what to do to get him out of his office. More mind palace, more table staring. What the fuck is this game? Is this a game at all? Do people actually play these things and enjoy them? What is this? I convince Mr. Barnes to come out of his office and then I find out there's no murder plot against me. And uh, yeah, that's it for the tutorial. So far, not thrilled. Let's go on to chapter two. We're gonna start the story proper now. Um, and uh, Sherlock Holmes looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Pretty dapper man. He's got his nice hat on. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Sherlock Holmes. All right, so it's all good. I'm in the backyard now. I know how to stare at things. I'm getting very good at staring at things. But I don't know what the weird little circle means. And the game isn't really helping me out very much figure out what the weird little circle means. And I get stuck in this backyard for like an hour. I, 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 I don't know if that's accurate or not, but it felt like a goddamn eternity and I'm stuck in this backyard and I don't know how to look at things and I'm, I'm starting to realize just exactly how damn particular this game is. You have to have the certain thing equipped to unlock the puzzle. It's driving me nuts is basically what's happening here. So what you got to figure out how to do is like go into this detective mode where the screen kind of goes green and then then you're able to view the clues, the hidden clues, and set up scenes. So like Sherlock Holmes can see in his mind what happened on in the crime scene. And it's a cool concept, but the practice of doing it is maddening because it's so specific with what it wants you to locate and in a certain order and in a certain way. And it can literally take 
like hours to figure out, which I guess some people like that shit. Some people are probably like in my comments right now being like, that's the whole fucking point, dude. These are adventure games and they're supposed to drive you nuts for days. But me, I don't know. I'm just not really feeling it, but I got to do this review. So here I am trying to figure it out live on camera. This was a great decision. I'm super happy I did it. We're looking around at boxes and I literally get stuck here. Like I literally, I just get stumped. Like I'm totally stumped and I'm interrogating the guy and I'm picking all the wrong answers and I'm feeling like a fucking dumbass. And you know what? I've had it. I fucking, I don't want to play this anymore. You, you see, you're fucking Sherlock Holmes. You play the game. I'm giving it to the skeleton. I'm going to give the controller to the skeleton and you play the game. I'm going to watch. I'm going to narrate. You play the game. He knows how to do it. I don't want to play this shit anymore. I'm done. All right, skeleton. What do you got, man? You know how to play this game? Show me how it's done. What the hell are you doing? You're, you're, you're looking at the clues. All right. Yeah. yeah show me how to do it. You're going to go in the backyard, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. You're going to run. You're going to go show me how stupid I am. Goddamn skeletons. All right. So yeah, here's where I was stuck. I found all of the bits. I found everything except for the last, you got to find all the different scenes and then you have to set them in the right order. And I just was not unlocking the last scene. You got to have it fully unlocked. You basically, you can't progress through the game unless you unlock that last scene, set them all in the right order. There's nothing else to do. You're going to be stuck here forever. The game is extremely, there's no helpful hints at all. And you see, you can't search. I, you see, this is the problem, guy. I wasn't able to search for the key. Well, how do you, how does this work? What are you doing? So you go in here and you have to highlight, you have to pin the lock with unusual keyhole clue and then you can search for the key. Who the fuck makes a game like this? It's so needlessly obtuse. And and then you can search for the key and then you get the final piece of the puzzle and now you can set every, now you can trial and error this. The good part about this is, is that once you have it all unlocked, you got the whole scenes unlocked, you can flip through here and make mistakes and it'll tell you, oh no, you fucked up and let you do it again. And it's, it's much more forgiving, but man, getting all the pieces of evidence in place, once you're in, in, in once you're doing an investigation, you can just get stuck. There's, there's no fucking way. So unless you got a skeleton that knows that, unless you got a Sherlock Holmes skeleton, or unless you uh, look online for like a really good walkthrough, I'll link one down below. If you're so unfortunate to be as dumb as I am trying to play this Sherlock Holmes game, I'll go ahead and link down uh, a helpful walkthrough that uh, maybe somebody read ahead of time. I didn't read it. And used to get through the game makes it much easier. And I, I would feel much more enjoyable if you just want to enjoy the story of this. And like, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to say the story of this game is very, very good. Uh, very enjoyable uh, experience so far on a narrative level. But mechanically, it can be a bit much. And, and certainly some of the puzzles here are just like... It, 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 it takes me back to early gaming where it was like, how the fuck would I ever figure that out? It's these damn adventure games. This is why I don't like them. It's like, well, how would I ever figure out to shoot that guy in the face, to take the sandwich, feed it to the dog, wait for the dog to take a shit, get the key out of the shit, and then unlock the cupboard where I got to put in the soap dish and then and then take out the uh, deodorant and, and, and put it on the Sasquatch. I, I don't know, man. So when you're not struggling with some puzzle or the other, you might just be wandering around the streets of London aimlessly, as I was. Uh, so yeah, even when you know all the stuff you're supposed to do, if you're using a walkthrough or a Sherlock Holmes skeleton to cheat through this thing, you're still going to get lost. The environments are huge, really. I mean, it's not like Grand Theft Auto huge, but they're still really, really sizable where you can totally get lost for you know, 15 minutes at a time, just wandering around whatever environment you're in. There's a lot of unused space 
where it looks like you can go interact with things, but you can't. And it's just maddening. It's absolutely, is this where the madness comes in? Is this, is this game? Like I haven't seen one Cthulhu or cult member or anything horrific whatsoever, but I am starting to lose my fucking mind. So I guess it's Lovecraftian horror. On to chapter two. I don't know, man. Look, I feel like, I feel like they taught me the mechanics and I'm really hoping to get into a good video game now. That's what I'm hoping for in chapter two. I'm hoping chapter two delivers on some horror. I'm hoping we're getting some, you know, it's raining, it's dark, it's gritty. I like it. And then we're staring at tables and struggling with puzzles. I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't expect this to be an action game. I didn't expect this to be anything other than what it was. I just didn't expect it to be quite as dull and as awkward and as strange. And I did expect to have a little more, you know, creepy shit going on. Maybe a little less Sherlock Holmes. I don't know. I like Sherlock Holmes. I do. I like Sherlock Holmes. I don't like you, but I like Sherlock Holmes. Well, here's something new. Lock picking. All right. That's bound to be fun. Who doesn't enjoy doing a little B slash E? So lock picking is um, not thrilling. It's not thrilling. It's not great in this game, but uh, hey, it's there. It's there. And that's what's important is we are doing something a little bit different in this game. And uh, so, yeah, we picked the, I picked the lock. I'm in a warehouse. It's more, you know, table staring. At least we're out of the rain. All right, man, I'm going through the warehouse. I'm trying to figure this out. All right, I got the crank. I'm putting the crank in place, man. This game's really getting on my fucking nerves. How much longer is this going to go on? All right, I raised something. I'm going to go down the stairs. All right, down the stairs. There's fucking Watson, you goddamn prick. That's kind of fucking creepy. What the fuck is this? I don't want to go down there. All right. Depart the, I can't return after leaving? That sounds fucking serious. Well, I guess I'll be careful down here. All right, just a creepy basement, just a creepy boiler room. No big deal. No big deal, nothing to be afraid of. All right, cool. Just descending into the depths of madness. Nothing I'm not used to. Yeah, it's getting really weird down here. What the fuck? Holy shit. This game's getting good. So yeah, spoilers, it's right around here when the game just loses its fucking mind and I become totally sold at this point. What the fuck? <laughs> so I'm like in some sort of limbo or hell, like Hellraiser looking hellscape. I don't know what the fuck this is, but I'm fucking here for it. Let's fucking go Sherlock Holmes. Now I feel like I'm getting the experience that I wanted to get from the very start. I mean, the art design takes a whole, it goes in a whole different direction. The puzzles are more engaging. I'm no longer staring at tables. Is it so much to ask? All right, so you're still using the same kind of mechanics, but I don't know, for some reason they're not bugging me as much when I'm in like hell limbo or wherever the fuck I am. Cosmic Cthulhu land. Um, I'm, and we got, we got Cthulhu talk going on now. This thing's really living up to its namesake. So we got a puzzle here where I'm walking towards the door and the door closes. So uh, what's the opposite of uh, running? Walking, that's right. We're gonna walk towards the door. Yeah, walk towards the door. Do I gotta jump into this fucking thing? Oh no. Get the fuck out of here. That's insane. The game actually wanted me to jump into the demon, into the demon mouth 
and be shit out the other side. This game's fucked up. I love it. So after being shit out of the demon's ass, walking around a little bit, solving a few extra puzzles, we come to this part with an eyeball on the wall and you got to figure out what the fuck to do here. Oh, so you got to stare at the eyeball in detective mode and then walk backwards through the door. How fucking cool is that? These puzzles have gone to the next goddamn level over here. The puzzles in the Limbo Otherworld section are just so much better than all the other shit I've done up to this point that I'm suddenly forgiving this game for being a fucking snore fest up until now. I mean, are you seeing this shit? How fucking cool is this? Like, if you watched the start of this review and didn't get this far, you'd be like, this looks, this game looks fucking boring as hell. But then you get to this and you gotta be thinking like, well, let me go play this shit. This looks awesome. Bury the goddamn lead, why don't you? So anyways, uh, looks like we're uh, giving control back over to Watson now. All right, so now we get control of Watson. We got to go find what happened to Sherlock Holmes. This is kind of cool. You get to control both Sherlock Holmes and Watson. Yeah, I know. No, I know I'm Watson. You're Sherlock. Shut the fuck up. And I'm walking around in the dark with Watson, illuminating shit up with the lantern. After that sequence I just went through, I'm on the edge of my seat. Sherlock Holmes is looking fucked up. So the main thing that's running through my mind at this point is like, is this really happening? Or is Sherlock Holmes like strung out on cocaine? What's going on? Anything's possible with Sherlock Holmes. If you know anything about the Sherlock Holmes story mythology, you know he's kind of a junkie. So... I don't know what's going on. Is he drugged? Is he hallucinating? Was he drugged by somebody? I mean, it's Sherlock Holmes. It could be anything. I'm hoping it's actually Lovecraftian, like demons and shit and uh, other gods and elder gods and all that kind of crap. But who knows? Are they going to cop out and they're going to be like, oh, it was all the drugs or Ooh, it was a fucking plot by a mystical uh, manservant. You know, I don't fucking know. Um, but I'm hoping it's the real deal. I mean, I'm just really loving the creepy vibes of the uh, of the limbo other world location in this game. And I'm in for the long run. It's at this point I'm figuring, look, guys, we're going to have to play every single chapter of this thing. It's got eight chapters. We're on chapter two. Let's do all eight. Holy fucking shit! It's a fucking murder doll! This game is out of its fucking mind and I love it. Oh, I really like the setup here. The top of the lighthouse is glowing red. Let's fucking go. What the fuck? All right, well, that's it. Uh, just to recap the last few moments of Sherlock the Awakening, you go through some really irritating quick time events and uh, move around some lights. Uh, very Resident Evil-like, kind of at the end. I remember doing shit like that in Resident Evil, moving around light beams and making sure they they hit the, the lenses just right and you smash them up and... I don't know, it was leading up towards maybe a big Cthulhu reveal that we never fucking get. And, uh, you know, I, I, did, I guess through my dialogue choices, maybe I decided that Sherlock went crazy or maybe that happens no matter what. 
I don't really think there's any replayability here. I, I'm not mad that I went through the experience though, and I definitely recommend that you check it out on your own. Even if you hate these kinds of games like I do, I did find this one rather uh, interesting to go through with some really unique atmosphere that I haven't seen in other games like it and might never see since. Um, I don't know, you know, Watson saves his buddy Sherlock at the end. Maybe there's something to be learned by that. Maybe we can all use some friends in our lives. Thank you to everybody that's watched it this far. What game should we cover next? I don't, you don't get to decide. I don't get to decide. It's like Mystery Science Theater 3000. The fucking video games just come on and I gotta play them. Maybe next time I won't have to sit with this fucking guy. Elementary, my dear Hartgrave. I bought this shit and I thought that maybe I would wear it. But this hat's, re it's not a real fucking hat at all. It's fucking ridiculous, man. There's no way I could have respect for myself if I wore that fucking thing. Ring Louis Maglana Park Tulu. I'm ending the video. Um, we're going to say something. Stay angry, motherfuckers.